All right, a very good morning to you. It's good to see you. Nine minutes past the hour. We apologize for starting late, but here we are. Welcome to the show. This is Your World, and my name is Winnie Lubem. And of course, today our focus will be on something that uh, we all should know about, all right, and uh, practice or live by, all right. And it's all about building a personal brand. And of course, we want to understand, first of all, what is a brand? How do you build uh, your personal brand? And why is it so important? And especially right now with the changes when it comes to technology and the digital era and of course the constant change when it comes to um, you know the job market so then how do you set yourself apart so that is what we want to focus on the conversation today and of course as we all know that Apple ch uh, challenged the world to think different right Nike on the other hand encouraged people regardless of age gender or physical fitness level to just do it and over the years in just a handful of words these slogans have told a story and influenced how people perceive the organizations behind them so together they represent the power and potential of uh, branding so the question is what exactly is branding and why does it matter and how do you build a strong personal brand well very valid questions that we'll be seeking answers to in today's show. So like I said, you want to stick around until the end of the conversation just to understand how then do you build your personal brand? Why does it matter? And how do you stay consistent? All right. And of course, when it comes to sustainability of the same, but at the same time, we have a question for you this morning. And the question is very simple. When you think of the word branding, right, what comes to mind, okay? So when you think of branding, what exactly comes to your mind? The hashtag to use is your world. And of course, you know the drill by now, how you can engage with us. And that is our socials at NTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter. And of course, we look forward to hear what you have to say as far as branding or building a personal brand. But before you meet our guest for the day, perfect person to help us uh, have this conversation, let's cross over to the DCI headquarters very quickly. We have a very on and Gena Kiroi to give us updates on what exactly is happening, um, you know, over there. But just in case you do not know, former Interior Cabinet Secretary, that is Dr. Fred Matiangi, is set to appear at the DCI headquarters this morning. He was actually told to be there by 9.30 a.m. or actually risk arrest. So Gena Kiroi is there. Gena, good morning. So good to see you this morning. Uh, is the former Super CS there yet? Because he said he will go at 8, forgetting 9.30, uh, you know, a.m. someone. So is he there yet? A very good morning to you, Winnie. Yes, we are awaiting former Cabinet Secretary for Interior, that is Dr. Fred Matiangi, to arrive here at the DCI. Like you had said, he had been summoned here and was told to arrive here at 9.30 a.m., but insisted that he will be here at 8 a.m. Uh, this was also attributed to his lawyer, Dan Stanomari. at the 9 a.m. stipulated time and that they will instead come earlier. Now, remember, according to a notice issued by Super Senior Intendant of, Intendant of Police, rather, Michael K. Sang, Matiang is accused of spreading false information about an alleged invasion of a raid on his residence uh, by a group of police officers between 8th and 9th um, of February 2023. Um, there now, some of the charges um, that have been put against the CS is that he's accused of publication of false information, like I said, and that's contrary to Section 23 of the Computer Misuse and Cybercrimes Act 2018, among other offenses. Uh, one of the things that the superintendent, uh, Mr. Sang, did say is that he believes that uh, Matiangi could either be connected to the offense or could give information that could assist in that offense. Now, remember that uh, Dr. Matiangi had jetted back into the country this past Saturday, and um, his lawyer had issued a statement saying that um, they were not aware of any investigations against him uh, but reckoned that uh, the constitutional officers do have a right to discharge their duties just as he has a right uh, to be given due process as a citizen of this country. So we are still awaiting his arrival here at the DCI headquarters and uh, we'll hopefully be able to get a statement from them um, on you know what, what actually happened behind closed doors because they're not allowed to be behind the closed doors proceedings um, among other issues that will be outlined. Uh, we do know that there are a myriad of issues that have been leveled against the CS and accusations so at least we'll be able to get a clearer picture on that but as for now I'm going to hand it back to you in studio as we continue to wait for his arrival here at the DCI. All right thank you very much Ngina for that update and of course we'll be keeping tabs um, you know on that developing story where like we said former interior cabinet secretary is set to appear that is Fred Matiang is set to appear before the DCI he was uh, someone to actually appear at exactly 9 30 a.m. or again risk um, you know being arrested of course he jetted back into the country on Saturday and this is after failing to honor uh, similar summons last week so of course again is holding fort for us at DCI headquarters and of course we'll be touching um, you know biz with 
with her as we continue with the conversation. But Monesi Musale, he's uh, in studio with us to help us understand what exactly is branding. First of all, what is a brand and how do you build a really strong brand? Because it's one thing to have a brand, but it's another thing to have a very, very strong brand. So Monesi Musale, image and behavior consultant. So good to see you and to have you this morning. How are you feeling? I'm good, Winnie. You thank you for having me. And thank you for coming, all right? So first question that a lot of people usually have a bit of an issue um, to really understand and even to define is a brand because majority of the people will say when I think of a brand I think of logo <laughs> or company X or company Y so what exactly is it when we talk about branding a brand is a mark okay. it's the mark that is left uh, especially on your mind mm -hmm. so we are the human being has has a brain which is like a supercomputer it has mm -hmm. it can process a lot of information at uh, enormous speeds yeah. uh, and and the issue with any computer is how much memory and how much capacity does this computer have yeah. so if you have a brand or a mark which has left enough of an impact on your brain mm -hmm. in other words you can carry and walk around with this brand wherever it is that you go because mm -hmm. it was so powerful it was so impactful yeah. um, then that's considered a strong brand right. so uh, in, in definition a brand is the mark that you leave on people right. a personal brand mm -hmm. is whatever you do or say or act um, that leaves a mark or a lasting impression. In mm -hmm. fact, the word is impression okay. on, on someone or a group of people so that they can then move around with this mark. Mm -hmm. the, the, the second uh, answer to the question is, why is a brand important? Yeah. It is because a brand can, can do things on your behalf when you're not in the room. Mm. When you're not there, speak on your behalf. it can speak on your behalf. Right. It can do things for you um, uh, without you necessarily having to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here sitting in studio and we're discussing uh, the former CS. Yes. Um, he's not here with us, no. but he's left enough of a mark mm -hmm. on our minds right. for us to be able to discuss him even while he's not here. Okay. So that's the essence of a brand. All right, so someone else was saying a brand is basically your story, right? Sure. Um, and there's usually like two questions to the same, and that is... Uh, okay, so we are a different person when we are outside versus the kind of a person that I am when I am alone, right? So, again, where does branding come in? Is it what people <laughs> see or is it what I see and what I know about myself that then will influence how people see me? Because there's also that question of faking it until you make it. Sure. Right? So when I'm outside here, why? people would think I have this right. kind of person. But then when you're alone, you're like, okay, but what exactly is happening in my life, right? So those two distinct persons, if I can say. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think what you're alluding to is the question of authenticity or, yeah. or being genuine. Mm -hmm. um, perception is reality. Is. What people see and hear what they observe mm -hmm. and how they connect that to what they feel mm. becomes a reality, whether it's true or whether oh, no. it's not true. Okay. Um, so truth is not really that, I won't say important, okay. but it is important when people now start to interact with the brand. Right. So when people perceive the brand for the first time, mm -hmm. they will make certain decisions and pass judgment on that brand mm -hmm. based on what they're just observing and okay. feeling at the time. Okay. That is called the first impression. Mm -hmm. Then as they interact with the brand, mm -hmm. uh, what we call the brand promise, as they start to engage with either the person or the organization mm -hmm. or whatever this brand is, mm -hmm. then they start to now form uh, more concise judgments that are grounded in reality, right. not perception. Okay. Because now they've had a chance to interact, interact with the brand with okay. and, they, and, and are, they're trying to see whether the, what the brand is saying mm -hmm. is actually the truth mm -hmm. on the ground. Okay. Um, and that's called the last impression. Mm -hmm. So the first impression is really what people do immediately. And they pass important. judgment. Yeah. The first time that you and I meet, we have, we will make certain decisions about each other it's just based true. on what we see and what we hear right. and someone's behavior. Okay. But then after that, as we continue speaking and, 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 and uh, engaging, mm. it then becomes apparent whether the first impression mm. matches with what you already decided about uh, yeah. this person or this or organization. Yeah. And then that becomes the last impression. The, last impression, the yeah. combination of those two things, that's the true brand. Okay. Um, some people's first impression is not the same as the last. Yeah. Some people's... Um, first impression is not the same as their online impression. So whenever there's a disconnect, that's where the authenticity breaks down. Absolutely. And people can see it, yes. um, you know, and, and especially when someone is not being authentic. And something that you um, said, which I think is very profound, that is the whole question about perception. Mm -hmm. And it's true. People will take or see things the way they want to see it. And again, like you said, might be true, might be not. But again, it's what they perceive at that very moment that determines whether they want to interact with your brand or not. So then how is it that there's some people have like a lasting brand and some people it's like a one off thing. We completely forget about them, their companies, organizations or even people that maybe we have interacted with 
but then forgotten about them. Like, where are they? We don't even really um, remember what their brand is about. Mm -hmm. And then we have other people who, it doesn't matter how long, <laughs> their brand still speaks for themselves. So then what distinguishes these two groups of people? Two things, mm -hmm. visibility and consistency. Okay. Um, when you say that there are people who you've, you've interacted with their brand, it was, an, it was impactful, it was wow, and then disappeared. They disappeared, yeah. what, what we're talking about here is top of mind. Mm -hmm. Remaining top of mind is, is really the, the critical element of branding. All right. Because um, we, we form promises based on this thing called trust. Okay. I trust based on frequency. Okay. So the more I interact with something, mm -hmm. the more frequent it is. Let's say you and I meet today, yeah, right. we meet again tomorrow, we meet again the third time, yeah, yeah. the fifth. By the 10th time of us interacting, mm -hmm. there will be a level of trust that will start to be established. Mm -hmm. By the 20th time, mm -hmm. uh, we will be very, very close. Mm -hmm. Not because we like each other, just as a consequence. Yeah, yeah. And my, my name and visibility will be firmly at the front of your mind, mm -hmm. as opposed to someone who you don't interact with or a brand or as a name often. that you don't interact with as mm -hmm. often. And the other, the other side of that coin is consistency. Yeah. How consistent are you to remain top of mind and to keep mm -hmm. being in someone's uh, view and uh, vision and, 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 audi and audi audibility? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we call um, the ability to, be, to remain relevant. Okay. You know, your relevance is based on how consistent you are mm -hmm. in terms of being in people's faces. That's true. It, sounds, it sounds simple and it sounds not very yeah. in intellectual, but that's yeah. really what it is. Yeah. How, can you remain in people's faces? Now, it depends, you know, are we introverts? Are we extroverts? Are we shy? Are we certain, you know, different personalities uh, like to be in the, in the foreground, mm -hmm. different personalities like to be in the background. But okay. regardless of that, can you do things that allow for your name to be spoken mm. even when you are not making that effort. Okay. They say that advertising is what you say about yourself, All right. but public relations is what other people say about, about you. you. So whatever it is that you're doing, yeah. whether you're advertising or getting people to talk about you, mm -hmm. as long as you remain top of mind. I mean, listen, when you say relevance, I think the first thing that comes to mind is sometimes people would go at great lengths just to remain relevant. Sometimes they might do things that are impactful, <laughs> but sometimes they might do things that, again, leaves a lot of people with so many questions mm. then yes they will talk about them but not in a good way and again like someone said whether bad or good publicity is publicity right. at, the, at the end of the day but then again I think it's what you stand for that again will influence um, what did we say sustainability uh, relevance, relevance, right, and also those first impression and lasting, last impression, lasting correct. impression. Okay, so then let's personalize it a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Um, because majority of the times when we talk about branding within companies, organizations, you know, and all those things, mm -hmm. but let's personalize it because I might say, okay, well, that's not my thing. Me, I'm just here doing my job mm -hmm. and then go home and just leaving by. But then, who does this apply to? Is it people who are maybe in the creative industry, businesses, entrepreneurs, ETC, or does it influence everybody? I think it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because your brand can do so many things for you while you're not necessarily there, okay. I think it's important for all of us to have an element of brand understanding. Right. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you're in the creative industry, in media, or, mm -hmm. or, or, or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I think you, we need to have a concise understanding of how to brand ourselves. Okay. And the first, the first element of this is what do you what do you want for yourself? What do you want for your life? Right. Um, once you have that it's a good idea, point to start. absolutely. Yeah. Once mm -hmm. you have that in mind, then mm -hmm. then the next question to answer is what do you want to be? Okay. What do you want and what do you want to be? Right. And then how do you now put that together in terms of the packaging? Mm -hmm. How do you then create that that canvas um, or that image that you would like people to now start okay. picking up? Always bearing in mind that there's something called target market. Mm -hmm. You will not be for everybody. True. Mm -hmm. You cannot be for everybody. Yes. There will be a group that will appreciate what you're doing mm -hmm. and there will be a group that is lukewarm or doesn't care yeah. and there'll be a group that is completely Absolutely, hostile. Absolutely, yes. They will be completely Don't hostile care. and they and they will actually, they will actively try and challenge what you stand for. Yeah. But regardless of that, you must be um, clear on what, where you, what you want for yourself and, right. and what you want to be. Okay. Once you have these two things in mind and you understand who your target market is, mm -hmm. the question now becomes, are you visible 
to your target market? Okay. Are you doing what you need to do to be visible to the relevant people that matter? Because you can be visible to everybody, yeah. but they're not your target market. Okay. They do not resonate with what, with you're, what, you're, with what you're saying and yeah. what you're doing and your behavior, mm -hmm. and they're not for you. And that's why, um, whether even if you're someone who's working in the back office or who's, who's not necessarily mm -hmm. in a customer-facing or a front-facing mm -hmm. type of position, yeah. are you doing enough so that the right people see and see hear, and hear you, you enough so that they can say your name in rooms where you are not. Where you're not in. Right. I like that. All right. So you have uh, six rules. <laughs> this is I as do. far as building <clears throat> a strong personal brand. And of course, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. How do we get there? Because again, like you said, majority of the times, a lot of people struggle to understand. So then how do I get there? Sure. Um, you know, to building a lasting brand. And, and, and like the fact that you say, it doesn't really matter where you are at the end of the day. People will have things to say about you. That's right. And again, the things that they say matter a lot, um, you know. So what are some of these six rules? I know we have like three minutes to go on a break, but can we just break them into like three parts? And sure. Then we'll I think the first the part of that rule is yeah. what we've said. Um, be yourself. Understand self-awareness, I think, is the first rule. Right. Understand who you are. What? Who are you? What do you want? Where do you want to go? And what do you stand for? What right. do you care about? Um, what are you good at? Okay. Because that might also be helpful because people will, will not necessarily remember you, but they might remember what you're good at. What you're good at um, the second thing is the target market. Who are you mm -hmm. for? There might be people who will be for you, against you, and maybe there might be some people who don't care. Okay. And the third rule is visibility and, and, and being seen and heard. Okay. You have to put yourself out there. People need to see and hear you. So that's, I think, the first part of the six. Okay. Then the next part is... Um, uh, substance. Okay. The fourth rule is substance. You it, it, you have to say and do and do what you say what because you, say. You, you, you can't you can fake it, but then you can only fake it for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, the fifth rule is the wow factor. You have to be able to go above and beyond people's expectations yeah. because brand has a way of of losing. Uh, its strength. True. So you need to keep pushing the, the limits and adding more and adding more. If you do this today, add a little bit more tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Keep people on their toes so that they can constantly think, "Wow, this is this is this is worth uh, staying staying with." All right. And then the last one is consistency. Okay, consistency. We talked about it's very important. A lot of people have a bit of a struggle when it comes to staying consistent. It's, sure. We have great ideas, and then we start on this journey, and then somewhere along the line, is like we lose it. Right? We don't stay consistent. Mm -hmm. And again, I think this is one of the mistakes who's about to ask so then what are some of the mistakes that people make when it comes to building and establishing their brand we talked about faking it mm -hmm. um you sometimes talk about you might not um you know encourage people to fake it because again at the end of the day for how long will you fake it right yeah and, and that's that why the first, first rule is self-awareness yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah and 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 then the whole question about remaining you know authentic and all those things but what are some of these other common mistakes that you have seen people make in the name of trying to establish their brand. We've seen people who copy, and I think that falls into the, the faking it aspect, where see me, I want to be like, uh, for example, who I want to be like opera, right? So I do everything that opera does. I speak the way opera speaks. I act the way opera acts in the name of, you know, trying to build my brand because that is my role model, but we end up copying mm. them and sell more opera than myself, right? right? Yeah, so then how do we, you know, build that and what are some of these mistakes that you've come across? Yeah, I think the first thing is being being not making sure that your first impression and your last impression are matching okay. because you need that. You need that you need to be able to, to have those two things in sync. The second one is not not doing enough uh, to establish uh, credibility okay. with your with your preferred target audience because your target audience have already chosen you. They've mm -hmm. chosen you and they they they're there for you. You don't have to do any work with them except keep doing what you're doing. Okay. So the minute you you do you you you're on a path, you've established this target market and then you quickly change paths. Yeah. So the group People that was confused. loyal to yeah, yeah, they start to get confused. Mm -hmm. And so you now start to build new communities and you'll struggle because you you wake up one day and you say, "Ah, oh, I feel like I'm not this person anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not this person anymore." Yeah. And meanwhile, you what you're doing is you're creating small communities all around mm -hmm. and you're not creating a substantive enough one that will actually mm -hmm. be able to do the work that a brand is supposed to do, which is to have meetings on your behalf and to defend you. Mm -hmm. So I think that jumping from uh, 
people people are very big on rebranding. Yes. So I'm in this season. I'm in this mm -hmm. season of this. I'm in a season of that. Yeah. I'm in a season of this. So mm -hmm. I see that a lot, and yeah. and that can sometimes have um, not the desired effect that you want because again, that consistency is so important. important. As much as you don't want to show up on a day, in the day that you don't want to show up, stay at home. Okay. There's, don't be, don't <laughs> be seen wrong. and heard. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. There'll yeah. be days where you just you, you you're not feeling up to it. Um, so stay out of the limelight because um, y your brand creates something called expectation. Mm. Once that expectation has been created, mm -hmm. then you, you people are waiting for f to be fed by okay. that expectation. Right. And if you're not able to feed it, if I'm sitting waiting for, let's say so, uh, I've ordered something at a restaurant mm -hmm. and I've, I know what I've ordered and I'm waiting for it mm -hmm. and then something different comes, yeah. I'm like, hey, no, this is not, this what, is not I what I ordered. Yeah. That's exactly how people feel mm -hmm. whenever um, you don't meet their expectations from okay. a brand perspective. All right, so we'll talk about um, rebranding because I know a lot of people who maybe established their brand, they've built their brand, took time and energy and you know research and all those things just to make sure that they build their brand. But then again, how do you sustain it a number of people like you said rebranding is not bad but then again it could be dangerous right so then how do we <laughs> rebrand the correct way because things are changing technology is here we are in the digital era so then how do you stay consistent stay relevant but also you know not losing yourself um you know from the same so of course we'd also want to understand that but if you have more questions for mosalia feel free to interact with us at ntv kenya both on facebook and on twitter and give us a call i mean if you want to speak to him directly he's here to answer all your questions as far as branding is concerned i can i know there's someone who was asking i think he's a photographer again we'll go through that question very shortly but um the numbers to call are down on your screen give us a call and of course by the end of the conversation let's all understand branding and how we stay consistent and relevant, all right? And of course, all that you come may have after the break. Stay with us. This is your world. I am Zizue Awar. I am the brand and marketing director for Safaricom. I think this International Women's Day, as you know, part of the Safaricom family, um, and part of a family that is all about leveraging technology to improve lives. I think the conversation I want had is one around the impact that Kenyan women are, are playing in this space. I think you know many people think that technology is a male thing, and I think that is is very far from the truth right so for me to elevate those stories especially being in marketing elevating those stories of the amazing things women in tech are doing to improve all our lives because it then inspires all those out there who are already doing those things to be like okay okay there's there's light at the end of the tunnel and i think we're seeing more and more of that competent women doing amazing things and I think more importantly, it's not just about me being at the table because I'm a woman. It's because I'm bringing a diversity of thought, right? And so for any company to win, for anything to win in life, you need the diverse points of view and thought, right? And that's what I bring to the table. So I think everyone wins when you have um, women sitting at the table. Winning the Carabao Cup might be a precursor to more and greater success for Manchester United. Then again, that has been the thought and expectation previously, only for disappointment rather than celebrations to follow. But this time, maybe it will be different for United and what feels like the beginning of something good under Eric Ten Hag. 
shield your families from germs. When dental is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness causing germs. Everyday use of dental keeps my loved ones protected. <sighs> Why do we do it? Hide, cover up, tone down. Choose boldness. Celebrate the skin you're in and dress with confidence with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. The triple layered care of deep moisture serum, precious cocoa butter and vitamin E enriches your skin for 48 hours. It's time to show off your best skin. Wear your skin with pride every time with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. Candice, what's that? I brought you a small bonus. Bonus for what? You got us 299 family dinners, 64 kisses on the cheek, 12 road trips to see grandma, 42 jokes from daddy, 49 laughs from mommy. In over 60 years of dealing with numbers, we've learned that the numbers that matter the most to you are the ones that matter the most to us. NCBA Bank. Go for it. With Glovo, you have anything you want from your city in your hands. Kama unatamani ugali beef ama fried chicken. Order a Glovo ujaribu restaurant mpya. Mmm, tamu. Kama game inawaka na unataka drinks zaidi. Order a Glovo ushangilie timu yako. Na kama your little one ame mess, dada hapa zimeisha. Order a Glovo and save the day. With Glovo, unaweza track order yako na kuongea na customer support which is always available. Download the app and order anything you want from your city. We'll deliver. Dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi. SMS Vipingo to 22365 or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. All right, so that those are scenes from the DCA headquarters, where, of course, the former super CES, and uh, that is the former CS, that is Interior Cabinet Secretary, uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi, uh, has already arrived at the DCI. And of course, he arrived at around um, 8.30, 8.33, thereabout, because it's currently 8.36. And of course, uh, we saw scenes over there where uh, the lawyers were actually sort of like denied entry based on what we saw. And of course, they're trying to negotiate their way in. Um, that is to the headquarters. Remember, he was someone to appear today at exactly 9.30. And of course, there they are sort of like trying to consult and see what is the way forward. Of course, we saw his lawyer, Dan Stano Mari. We can also see um, Otiene Amolo over there as well. Um, you know, just trying to see what exactly, um, you know, is happening. We can also see, uh, see Eugene Wamalo over there as well um, amongst a group. Um, you know, of so many people who, again, we believe are relevant, um, you know, or, um, you know, are relevant to him. So, again, so, of course, the security there are insisting that the former CS, again, um, you know, just gets in. But, um, you know, there was a bit of a push and pull here, um, you know, over there in terms of understanding, uh, is he allowed to go in with his lawyers or not? So those are currently what is uh, the scenes as far as what is happening at the DCI headquarters. Remember, again, he is set to appear. And this is just to give an explanation um, as far as, um, you know, the earlier 
uh, what is it called? Like we can see what he said, and that is that um, you know he was actually um, you know his home was raided on February 9th, um, you know this year. So he is uh, you know expected to shed light on the same. Remember those the whole question about was it a false um, you know um, information that he provided, and then uh, this is actually contrary um, you know to the Section 23 of the Computer Misuse and Cyber Crimes Act of 2018, which amongst other offences is in regard to the alleged raid of his home and that is on February 9th. So like I said, our very own Gina Kirori uh, is on the ground holding fort for us and of course we might be joining her uh, as and when we have any new developments. But back to the conversation of the day today and of course it's all about building a personal brand. Um, and what we're saying today is, you know, it's important, yes, to build and, you know, have a personal brand. But at the end of the day, how then do you sustain it? How do you remain relevant? How do you make sure that the, your brand actually speaks for you? And like Manessa said, when you are not in the room. So the question that we're asking you today is when you think of branding, uh, what comes to your mind? All right. What comes to your mind when you think about the word branding or brand? At NTV Kenya is how you can relate with us. And that is uh, when you think of branding, what exactly comes to your mind? The hashtag to use is your world and tell us you know what do you think i've seen some people say you think of logo you think of business x or business y or you think of their colors um you know as well or their taglines and all those things but then to personalize it right when you think about branding what exactly you know comes to your mind that is what we look forward to hear what you have to say we have a few questions for you uh patrick Wamboy uh on facebook asks is age a factor that can deter branding um not really, because age, age is not a factor that can deter branding, but it can determine target market. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Age, gender, mm -hmm. level of income, mm. education, yeah. status, profession. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that can decide the demographic or the type of people who will respond to your brand. Right. So certain people might be drawn to a, a, a brand that is a, of a specific age. Mm -hmm. um, right now we have these brackets that you call you know, ba uh, boomers, millennials, mm. Gen X, Gen Z, Gen and so Z's. on. Yeah. So there might be uh, a, an element there of, mm. of distinguishing who will respond uh, more positively to your to brand, your brand. Okay. Uh, who will care more about your brand than mm. others. So it's not a deterrent, it's just mm. one of those things to consider when, you, when you're talking about target market and demographic. Absolutely. All right, and then someone else asks, this is um, Daniel Chariot, says, marketing currently is difficult to tap a consistent flow. So I don't know what you have to say to that, that the current market is, you know, sort of like difficult to actually tap a consistent flow. What do you say to that? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the, word, the word market is where buyers and sellers meet. True. So who, who, who are you, mm -hmm. who is buying from you and what are you selling? All right. And are you there mm -hmm. where the people are, are, are supposed to buy whatever it is that you're selling? So it's, right. it's up to you, first of all, to determine mm -hmm. what do you have to sell? What do you have to offer? What are you good at? What, what gifts do you have? Mm -hmm. What some people just look good. Mm -hmm. Some people just speak well. Mm -hmm. Some people can really do well with an Excel sheet. Mm -hmm. Some people know how to hold a camera really well. Yeah. Some people know how to clean things amazingly. So what, what do you have mm -hmm. that is of value that you can then offer? And then once you have that, are there people around who will respond to that positively and say, oh, I like that. I want to, I want to engage with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the work comes in. Okay. And uh, the, the, the gentleman's question was, mm -hmm. was one more, I think, of effort. Mm -hmm. um, you know, marketing flow is, is really not about having a marketing manager or a team of, yeah. of marketers or even influencers <laughs> you. pushing yeah. your brand. No, yeah. it's about what kind of effort are you making to go to the market? Mm -hmm. What kind of effort are you making to be where your target market exists? Yeah. If your target market is, is, is online mm -hmm. in a specific uh, platform, mm -hmm. in a specific group, mm -hmm. then are you there? Yeah. Is your content there? Are you there? Mm -hmm. If your target market is in um, computer, and, and the IT world, mm -hmm. are you, is your name and face and gift mm -hmm. being seen and heard in those places? Okay. If, if there are conferences, if there are um, engagements, if there are SACO groups, mm -hmm. whatever it is mm -hmm. where you think what you have is relevant, mm -hmm. can what you have mm -hmm. be where it is needed to okay. be seen and heard? That's Absolutely. really the that's that's the level of marketing effort that I would that, say that is required. Need. Okay, I see that. And then we have Billy on Twitter says, just a question, I'm a young photographer who seeks to build a brand for the young people, but on several occasions I encounter setbacks like strain financially to give quality. So how do I position myself that in case, um, 
it happens that I do not find myself losing on clients I already captured. Sure. Um, so w the, the question of quality is what you say, it's rule number four, what you say mm -hmm. and what you do has what to match. Do. So be careful on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Are you promising the moon and the stars <laughs> and giving <laughs> and, you're not able to and you're not able to deliver? And, that's, yeah. and, that, and I think that's a problem that a lot of, especially young people make is, is mm -hmm. over promising and under delivering. Okay. Um, be very careful of doing that because um, it can have you know, a, a negative impact mm -hmm. on, on how people perceive uh, your brand. So yeah. if, you, if you know you are at a certain position, start small, but be consistent. Mm -hmm. And as you grow now, because you're under promising and over delivering, mm -hmm. As you grow, mm -hmm. you're now able to meet the expectations. Remember we spoke about expectations? expectations yes. You're able to meet the expectations much easier mm -hmm. than if you promise something and you're not able to deliver. Mm -hmm. That's something that we're tempted to do because the sales process requires you to really sell your product. Mm -hmm. But remember, the brand promise is in the engagement. Okay. Between first and last impression, right. I have to engage with this, with this brand. Mm -hmm. Once I engage with it, I now form mm -hmm. certain Real, realistic decisions mm -hmm. and judgments about okay. what it is that I'm dealing with. Absolutely. So if you know that you don't have the capacity to do like superb photography in the mm -hmm. beginning, start small. Mm -hmm. there's, not, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with starting small. We've all started small. Mm -hmm. And you start and you grow and you build because mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, there's numerous sayings that say that blessings come with consistency. True. Yeah, it doesn't come with it doesn't come with the people who do the big gestures, the big mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Those big so things are big once things. a while, but the yeah. but the small, consistent ones that maybe are not so glamorous. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the ones that actually build who you are and they actually Over build time. your capacity. Yes. So if he's interested in, in creating a portfolio of clients that will respond to his photography, mm -hmm. my advice would be to do, do what he can with the equipment that he has, mm -hmm. with the skills that he has, mm -hmm. and then build new clients slowly mm -hmm. but consistently. Absolutely. Yeah. Remain consistent. It's very, very important. Okay. Um, so let's talk about then branding and especially now in the digital era, sure. right? Things are constantly changing. Um, things are becoming better by the day and you can't use, um, you know, whatever tactics that you used maybe like 2005, <laughs> you cannot apply that now because everything is changing and the market as well is growing and becoming wiser by the day. Sure. So then how do we harness I mean, you know, the power of social media or the digital era now to just make sure that we build a powerful brand and also remain consistent. I think the word here is community. Okay. Um, find where your community lies. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people refer to it as tribe or community, but I like the word community hashtag because tribe. My hashtag tribe. tribe yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I always say even even Jesus Christ had disciples. True. So you need to first have your, 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 your community build mm -hmm. around that because yeah. branding is about numbers. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, yeah. as, much, as much as you might have something spectacular to offer mm -hmm. and you might be the best in your field, mm -hmm. if not enough people see and hear about it, mm -hmm. they will dismiss it for someone or something that they see and hear more of. Mm -hmm. For example, if we look at the example of Donald Trump yeah. versus Hillary Clinton yeah. um, in, the, in the previous uh, elections in 2016, mm -hmm. 2017, mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump did everything that he could to remain relevant because yeah. he understands ratings. Yeah. He understands community. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he was consistent in making sure that he remained visible, top of mind, every single time, mm -hmm. continuously making himself just talk out about there. Him. Talk about yeah. him, whether it's positive Good or negative. Not. Mention, 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 okay. mention. All right. Um, so, so I think that 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 would be that would be the the, the key to use the digital space, mm -hmm. whether it's Twitter, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, and then understanding that the rules of each of these platforms are different. Mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn, as an example, mm -hmm. is geared more towards your professional um, type of, yeah. of engagement where mm -hmm. people are coming there to look for jobs, they're coming to look for opportunities, they're mm -hmm. coming to look for certain things. Yeah. In, with Twitter, they're coming to look for certain things. Mm -hmm. With Instagram, they're coming to look for certain yeah. things. Yeah. Facebook, certain things. Mm -hmm. YouTube, certain things. TikTok, certain things. So of those certain things on those platforms, mm -hmm. does your content match and fit with those things yeah. <clears throat> are you are you able to generate relevant content mm -hmm. that speaks to your community mm -hmm. that ties in with those things that people are looking for absolutely yeah. and then positioning yourself because again like we said branding does not only apply to like entrepreneurs and and you know people in the creative space and all those things sure. it applies to every single person of us so for someone who maybe is looking for employment or maybe they want to upgrade you know um in their career in all those things mm -hmm. so taking advantage of social 
social media and being mindful of what exactly you're posting on what site because again back then people used to say yeah i mean there's some sites that is just my personal life so i post whatever i want and then employers go to that site and they find things that are not really good and that is how you end up losing your job so then how do we remain mindful of what we're posting and what we're selling about ourselves because sure. the point here is everybody's looking at us right sure. yeah it doesn't matter which platform you're on mm -hmm. Who you are is who you are is who you are. Okay. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. Yeah. So if you are on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. then who you are mm -hmm. needs to tally and match with who you are on LinkedIn. Okay. And it needs to tally and match with who you are on Twitter. Right. And it needs to tally and match with who you are on Facebook or even TikTok. Okay. Because whatever, whatever, whatever truth you're selling and mm -hmm. whatever value you're able to create and mm -hmm. whatever promise you're making, mm -hmm. that, is, that is visible across the board. Now, the tone and the content will change. For example, Instagram is more reels and photos and yes. videos, as an example. Mm -hmm. Twitter is more conversational. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn is a little bit, it's, it's a mix of, of, of professional content yeah. versus the, the usual um, uh, or, uh, mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook is, you know, friends and family. Yeah. But regardless of where you are, who you are is who you are is who you are. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the, the style of the content which changes. It's different. Yes. Okay. So on YouTube, for example, you can post long videos mm -hmm. uh, because the community there wants to engage with slightly longer videos. Mm -hmm. But on TikTok, the community there wants that. to yes, engage right. with bite-sized chunks. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, they want to engage with your thoughts in, in rapid time. Mm -hmm. They don't want you post a tweet today then you tweet after five days, five days they want hours. it you know yeah so it just depends on on mm -hmm. what the what each platform uh, demands of you. of you and so yeah. that that's why i think some people are, are are comfortable with different i know people who are big on twitter massive yes. and they're non-existent anywhere else yeah. the people who are huge on tiktok mm -hmm. but non-existent anywhere else i know someone mm -hmm. um we're doing a career summit with with her mm -hmm. she's massive on linkedin mm -hmm. and on instagram but everywhere else it's kind of like yeah mm -hmm. But then she's now found a way to transition that content into yeah. TikTok to make it really bite small size. and bite-sized. Yeah. So who you are is who you are is who, you, who are. you are. If I'm an employer mm -hmm. and I, I have access to a mobile phone with apps, mm -hmm. all those apps are on the yeah. same screen. That's true. I can click on LinkedIn, I can click on things. Facebook, and I, will, yeah. and, I will, and I will dig up on you, and I will do my due diligence on you to see <laughs> what is what is what yeah. um so be 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 conscious that yeah. um it's now no longer about oh well i'm on linkedin that's my professional yeah. but on instagram is where i can I'm post my ratchet weekend <laughs> things no uh, we we will come yeah, as employers True. we will be in on all of those platforms and if we're not then we will find people in our mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. who will be able to find you absolutely you will be found on any platform as yeah. long as as long as you exist they are looking that yeah. is what you need to know. Okay, all right. So then let's talk about someone who is looking to rebrand, um, you know, and, and to sort of like re strategize and all those things. What are some mm -hmm. of these key steps that you would advise? Um, because like we said, the point is to remain relevant, but also build a very strong brand that sure. even when you're not speaking, even when you're just in your house sleeping, right. people are still talking about you. So those people who are looking, you know, I built my brand maybe like 10 years ago and I'm looking to rebrand and make it fresh mm -hmm. and still have people uh, interact and resonate with my brand. What are some of the steps that we need to look at? You absolutely have to know what your gift is. Okay. Um, I believe we were all put on this earth mm -hmm. with some kind of talent or gift or calling. All right. um, and tapping into that is super important mm -hmm. because um, if I can quote Warren Buffett, he says, build a moat around your talent mm -hmm. and it will be the one that will serve and protect you for years to come. All right. Your talent, mm -hmm. your gift, your calling, that thing that you have, mm -hmm. nurture it, build it up because um, on the days when, you, when the relevance is kind of low and you don't feel like being seen and heard or circumstances don't allow you to be mm -hmm. seen and heard, for as long as you're able to deliver something that people like, mm -hmm. then you will always be in demand. And, and that top of mind will always mm -hmm. remain. Mm -hmm. and, and I think people want to create branding and visibility absent the, the substance. Mm -hmm. It's like having a cake I mean, which is all as icing. Long as, me, I'm relevant. See, as long as people are talking about right. me, that's all that matters. Having okay. a cake yeah. which is just icing yeah. is not helpful. You need the substance, you need the actual cake. Mm -hmm. So build that cake first. Mm -hmm. Be, be really good at something. Yeah. Find, find something that you enjoy. And, and, and you see, it's easier mm -hmm. if you enjoy what you, what you do. So if, you, if, you, if you're naturally inclined towards something, mm -hmm. you do that thing, no mm -hmm. matter what. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're seeing people now who are athletes and sports people and, 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 and creatives and politicians. Mm -hmm. um, and I've worked with the entire range of, of people from students all the way to C-suit, mm -hmm. um, to politicians, to sports people. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. What's your calling? What's your gift? What's your, what's your thing? Mm -hmm. And then that thing can now be placed in different uh, platforms mm -hmm. and arenas. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're, if you're, for example, good at, you enjoy photography and you like the way light moves and whatever, mm -hmm. you have endless career options in yeah. film, in, in this, mm -hmm. in, 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 this kind of, in this kind of work, television, mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 on the internet, you can create content for people. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, can, you can establish yourself uh, as the go-to person for specific things. You can, you can work in, in weddings. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there, there's, it's endless what you can do. Yeah. And so it just depends where your gift is, re is required. If you're good at speaking, mm -hmm. uh, you can teach, you, you can be yeah. in public relations, mm -hmm. sales, mm -hmm. business development. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can be a, a guest panelist. Yeah, I mean. You can be invited <laughs> for all kinds of things mm -hmm. just because of what, what it is that you do. So mm -hmm. um, I think the most important thing on the rebranding journey is just be really, really, really good at something. Yeah. Create that value and then see where it can be deployed. Because yeah, the... there'll be days, I know, I remember during Corona, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, there were days where you know, what you were good at was no longer relevant in a certain space. Mm. Now you need to find where that thing mm. can be relevant. And there'll always be something. There always so is. when you there find that is. thing that you're good at, mm. ask yourself, how many applications, mm. how many uses mm. does this gift of mine have? Okay. Where can it be deployed? Right. And then start to, you know, say, okay, you know what, I'm going to build this vertical. Mm -hmm. I'm now uh, defaulting to my business development <laughs> hat. I'll build this vertical in terms of relevance. Mm -hmm. Then right. when that stops, I'll build this one and I'll build this one and I'll build this one mm -hmm. because there's no there's no end to it. Really. I mean, yeah, find ways and avenues that you can expand as well. Sure. Uh, but find find your thing. Find your thing. That. All right, find so we cannot thing. finish this conversation without talking about then etiquette, right? Sure. Branding etiquette. Very quickly, our director Jack is like, yeah, you literally got two minutes, all right? So <laughs> can you do that? In literally two minutes and that is branding etiquette. What is it that we need to know from the way we speak, the way we address the way we everything you know as far sure. as running is concerned so etiquette is uh the comfort level that you create with the, the other side okay. and it's about knowing what does the other side expect of you mm -hmm. so there will be groups that expect you to take off your shoes when you mm -hmm. approach them there'll be groups that will not expect you to make eye contact with them yeah. there'll be groups that will expect you to have a firm handshake mm -hmm. there'll be groups that don't shake your hand at all mm -hmm. so you need to have the understanding mm -hmm. of the groups that you are with all right so that now you can do the right thing so that you do not cause offense and you create mm -hmm. comfort. Yeah. That's what etiquette is. It's about okay. creating comfort with the other side. Right. Um, and that means that you need to be a little bit um, sen uh, sensitive, mm -hmm. um, but also if you have the opportunity, do some research. Mm -hmm. Don't just go in blindly and say, well, this is who I am and that's who I am. If, if yeah. they don't like it, take it, or leave take it. it or leave it. I'm, I'm authentic. I'm authentic. <laughs> I'm doing my thing. I don't no. care. No, yeah. you will rub people the wrong way. So, so if you're in a room, understand that there will be people who might not be for you. There mm -hmm. might be people who will be for you. But who do you want to be comfortable with? Mm -hmm. Who do you want to ha establish that comfort with you? Mm -hmm. And then do the things that they expect. Mm -hmm. Etiquette is about managing expectations. Mm -hmm. So when in Rome, do as do the, Romans. the Romans do. So when you yeah. go, if you go to a place, do what is expected of you to the mm -hmm. best of your ability. Mm -hmm. And if you know that you're not able to to meet that expectation, then don't go. Okay. Don't don't go cause an uh, offense. Problems, and then yeah. and then say, well, I was just being my authentic self because okay. your reputation. Mm -hmm. And your brand will mm. say things about you when you're yeah. not there. The lasting impression that we talked about. That's right. Okay, so cup it up, right? And, <clears throat> and what is that one thing, or maybe two, that you'd want someone to walk out of this conversation with? And I'll take that as your parting shot. Um, as much as we, we like to think that our brand does not matter, it mm -hmm. has great impact for you and your career and your opportunities. Mm -hmm. Because if your name is said and heard in rooms that you are not, mm -hmm. you can have opportunities created for you mm -hmm. while you sleep. Oh, you right. know that adage where you'd love to make money uh, while you sleep so mm -hmm. that that's financial freedom? Yeah. You can have reputational freedom mm -hmm. if you create a strong Absolutely. enough brand. Absolutely. I love that. All right. Musale Munesi. Uh, Munesi Musale. That is how you want to name sure. Musale Munesi image. And we have a consultant giving us all the information we need to have as far as building a personal brand um, is concerned and also remaining relevant, making sure that your brand is sustainable. So I'm pretty sure you've learned a lot from the conversation today. But remember, the conversation again continues online. That is on our YouTube page, that is at NTV Kenya, and on socials as well at NTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter. And tag me as well at Lubembe underscore Winnie. So we're going to uh, close it here. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, same place, right here on your world. It is International Women's Day tomorrow. So we'll have an amazing, amazing panel lined up for you. But until then, stay Stay safe and see you tomorrow. Goodbye for now.